Hey everybody, I'm getting back into flint napping and some of my videos on flint napping have had almost a million views. I'm super stoked about that, thank you so much. And I've got dozens, dozens, if not a hundred videos on flint napping, so check out my channel and search through the videos. One of the common questions I get is where do I get my stone for flint napping? Well, this tutorial is going to be all about the stone. So, if you're new to flint napping, probably the easiest thing to do is to buy slabs. Now, neolithics.com is one company that I've gone through, and um, you basically have choices of materials. So, I have tried Texas flint. Now, you've seen the buttery, nice flint nap pieces out of Texas flint. Well, this is very hard when it comes to you. It hasn't been heat treated. And in my experience, don't start with something very hard like Texas Flint, okay? These are all about a quarter inch thick, by the way, and you order them by the length and by the width. And I've got flint mapping videos on how to work from these flat pieces. Now, my favorite two pieces are obsidian, which this has a rough surface right now. This is volcanic glass. But once you break it, it's got that shiny black. This stuff flint naps like glass. It's very, very easy to work. Sometimes maybe it's too easy because the piece will break, okay? So my ultimate favorite is dacite. Now dacite is a little firmer than obsidian. It's not as likely to break, but it's easier to work than Texas flint or some of the cherts. Okay, so the same company offers fiber optic glass. So this flint naps exceedingly easy and you can get pink, I mean blue, you can get all sorts of, this is opalescent, this is like a fake opal color, and um, those work beautifully. Go ahead and play with those. Now if you've seen my other videos, one option that I've chosen is to make my own slabs out of toilet porcelain. Now toilet porcelain you can get for free, just go break up a toilet, I showed that in another video, but be warned, this stuff is very grainy, very difficult to flint nap, and you're gonna end up with a lot of steps, you're gonna end up with a lot of broken pieces. Toilet porcelain is actually one of the most difficult things to flint nap in my experience. Now another option I tried when I was just getting started is thick glass. This is from an old cathode ray television, and I go to the dump and I basically bust it up. Uh, there's a coating on here that I'm, I'm not sure what the coating is, but this is razor sharp, it's, it's very thick. Uh, it, it, definitely can be flint napped, but um, very dangerous. And speaking of glass, you can work with the bottom of whiskey bottles, etc. but a lot of times they're curved. So you can go to a glass shop and get, say, half inch glass. And again, exceedingly sharp. If you're just starting, you're gonna cut yourself like crazy with this. Now let's move on to natural stone. When it comes to natural stone, let's just look at these two. This is not going to be flint nappable. It's rounded, it's probably a lake or a river stone. It's sedimentary, uh, it's got a lot of grain. Try breaking this with a hammer, and if it doesn't create nice flake scars, okay, shiny, sharp edged flake scars, it's not gonna be usable. So again, you want something that when you hit it with a hammer, break a piece off, you get a sharp, crisp break, and it's nice and smooth and kind of shiny. So this again is day sight and neolithics.com will sell you these. Um, you can buy these by the pound, and you know, they come about this size and shape, and you're just gonna have to work with them from this condition. One of my other favorites from neolithics.com is this keel cook, and it does nap pretty well, but it's hard to thin. But this is good to practice your technique, and again, you order it by the pound, and they come in sizes, you know, you can order four inch sizes, six inch sizes, something like this is good, but you're gonna have a lot of waste. So again, slabs, a lot less waste, and you can get Q Cook and other materials slabbed through neolithic.com. Now let's look at the good stuff. Once I started getting pretty good at flint napping, I decided I could invest more money in the material. Now, there's a little tiny deposit in Ohio, and it's called Flint Ridge Flint. Now this, this piece right here, look at, I mean, oh, it's buttery soft, it's been heat treated. Flint Ridge also has different colors, so here's a nice one. You see this has been heated at 560 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, these are very difficult to get your hands on. You have to know the owner of the property, which I know a friend of a friend type of thing, and we pay them lots of money for this. Again, this stuff, you know, if you have big imperfections that can be difficult to work with, a lot of times I'll slab these 
and it's very, very, very beautiful material. Look at that. But very expensive. Now, one thing to avoid. This looks super pretty, right? Look at that. Look at I slabbed it right there. The problem is all of those little imperfections, every time you flint nap into them, it's going to crush. It's going to break. It's going to crumble. It's exceedingly difficult. I mean, it looks beautiful. And I've made a couple of decent points. They're always small. Um, anything with those imperfections, those lines, those inclusions, like look at, you see the quartz? Yeah, I, I would avoid that. So now let's go to just natural rock that you would find out in the wilderness. All right, I have a friend in Tennessee who walks the, the riverbeds and picks up pieces. And some of these you can tell have been worked in the past by Native Americans, like this one. So he brings them back to me and I try. These are again, very grainy. You see, they've got potential, okay? And you could imagine Native Americans having access to hundreds or thousands of these. Eventually you're gonna break a piece and it's gonna be very nice. In my experience, again, very grainy is not very good. Um, here's one that looks like it's got potential, but I basically tried and yeah, you get crumbly steps and fractures, not good. Anything with grain, avoid. And then finally, look at this one. So this again is from Tennessee. It looks shiny, it looks good, but when I started working it, it was very difficult to thin. All right, so thinning is probably the most difficult thing in flint napping. I'll do a video just on thinning. All right, just a couple more. I picked these up in North Carolina. I believe it's a combination of rhyolite and some quartz. Again, you have to break it because the outside's gonna look like this. You break it and you see these shiny, smooth, sharp edges and you're like, yeah, that's cool. Um, I have slabbed these and I have a tile saw. You can get it at Harbor Freight um, and you slab it and it makes it a little easier to thin. But again, all those imperfections, all that grainy texture, try to find the smoothest, most consistent, homogeneous material you can. If you're in the South, one other thing we see in the historical record is a lot of quartz. So this is quartz and very difficult to thin. It's very difficult to get a good piece. The best thing to do with this is to slab it or just work through so much of it that eventually you get a, a flake that breaks off and you can probably make it into a small arrowhead. So I hope that answers some of your questions about where I get materials. There are other places, try eBay. Um, I think I bought some materials from eBay and um, look into the agate. Agate or in Australia, there's mookite and you can buy those. They're very expensive, but they're pretty and they're very easy to work. Um, just let me know if you have any questions, if I can help you get your hands on some rock. And I would say for beginners, start with the slabs of obsidian and dacite work with some glass, and then invest in the big whole chunks of rocks. Uh, very different techniques. When you're working with slabs, it's all pressure flaking. And when you're working with big rocks, you've got to use percussion to thin it down and then do pressure flaking. So check out my videos. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.